After the great defeat of Gordon, the turkey farmer, Turkey Pinky Pence was charged with protecting their territorial borders of their homeland, Turkeyville. His duty was to lead and train a cadre of brave turkeys to always defend Turkeyville Island. He was awarded the Victoria Cross bearing the inscription for valor. Recruits, today we will undertake one of the most daring challenges. Here, have this. Oh boy, Turkey Pinky Pants is so nice. We're having a treat before our training today. <laughs> Silence! This is not a treat. This is our weapon. Our strategy today is PSC. Panic, scream, confusion. We turkeys are constantly being threatened by the crocodiles on the East Island. Our goal today is to learn how to deter the crocodiles from advancing towards our island. We will attack when the crocodiles have their mouths open and releasing heat from their body. First, we panic and jump on their back. We scream, ah! And drop one blueberry into their mouth. This will cause confusion among the crocodiles as they'll focus more on the blueberry than us. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Recruits, the time has come to test our PSC routine. Watch me demonstrate. Well done, team. I know this was a difficult challenge. It's important to follow the routines strictly as described. This is the only way to ensure our victory. No matter how tempting your weapons may be, please do not put them in your mouth. Mike ate the blueberry meant for the crocodile, and he almost replaced the blueberry in the crocodile's mouth. I'm sorry, Turkey Pinky Pants. The blueberry just looks so delicious. True. Fear and hunger go hand in hand, Mike. Okay, we've had enough training for today. And since you have all conquered your fears, you must be starving. 
Let's get lunch at the Gobbler! Those crocodiles won't ever mess with us again! My largest recruit with the urge to salute. Good morning, Turkey Pinky Pants, sir. Come on now. Let's all soak in the team spirit of turkeys bending together in heroic fellowship on this glorious day. Let's work on that posture, Mike. Come on now, shoulders back, stomach in, chin up. That's right, it's Turkey Pinky Pants' confidence that got us all excited to be a part of this mission. Yes, uh, it was my confidence that was instrumental to Miriam and I hooking, I mean meeting for the first time. We were young, hip, Cool hair. friendly military commands that the best way to jack your confidence is by shaking your booty. So today, we are going to boost our confidence through grunting, busting a move, jumping the jive, raving, boom shakalaka, and cutting a run. Now, everyone, please take a partner and watch Miriam and I perform the confidence booster. Dance! Okay, here we go.
mighty turkey, Dicky Pants. Have a good night, Mike. Recruits, today we will learn to defend ourselves from a grenade attack launched towards us by the enemy on the battlefield. The battlefield is a messy place and has no room for jokers. We have to be prepared and robust in every possible way. Mike and I will demonstrate. Oh, me? Who else has big muscles for throwing a heavy ball, silly goose? Oh, yeah, I am the muscle guy. Hey Mike, maybe you can flex the grenade into not exploding. Wait, what? I'm a goose? No, you're a raccoon. No, a frog. Rivet, rivet. <laughs> <laughs> Psst, Mike. He's only teasing. <laughs> Mike! And I will demonstrate. Oh? Now listen carefully. We are going to pretend that the ball is a grenade that has been thrown at you on the battlefield. Remember! We are just pretending this is not a real grenade. It is a football! But this is how you can protect yourself when an explodey grenade is tossed at you on the battlefield. Just kick it back to the enemy as hard as you can. Now! Please, use your imagination. Okay, Mike, throw the grenade at me now. <laughs> my bad. Maybe I should have used my left leg instead. Well, throw the ball a little faster. <laughs> We're doomed. Now, I want you to throw it very slowly. I have an ancient and time-honored technique that I think will be very effective.
Recruits, I am now convinced that this exercise was a great success. But while success is important on the battlefield, safety is more important. If a grenade is thrown at you on the battlefield, my advice for you is to fly away. Fly, fly, and don't look back. After all, what are these wings for? Let's ride! Hello, children. I'm your substitute teacher for the day. Children, please take your seats. Oh no, not the monster. <laughs> My name is Turkey Pinky Pants, and I am the protector of the territorial borders of Turkeyville. Yes, little uh, skinny fellow. Did you name yourself after your pants? Very funny, kid. Did you name yourself after your... your... Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, no. No, of course not. The name was given to me after my heroic takedown of Gordon, the turkey farmer. Don't they teach you this in history class? Don't you know what grade this is? We're all just six years old. This is first grade. We don't have history class until third grade. So, are you qualified to be in a classroom full of children? A room full of children! So what's your real name then? Turkey Pinky Pants is my real name. What's yours? Afro hair. What? Wait, so, so, what's his name? That's self-explanatory. What? In what way is that self-explanatory? That's self-explanatory. Yay! Self-explanatory! Okay, but what's his name? You are a not smart turkey.
Oh. <laughs> hmm. Aha. Idiomatic expression. Does anyone know what that means? Hmm. Nope. Yes! Curly haired girl! Is this topic age appropriate? Uh. I think so. Uh. Uh. Yes? Yeah, yes! Yes, it is! It is age appropriate! Okay. So, what is it? So. <clears throat> An idiomatic expression is a colorful way of using groups of words to express an idea where the established meaning is unrelated to the individual words. Established meaning is unrelated! For example, my substitute teacher is a nutritional underachiever. <laughs> For example, a storm in a teacup. Um, that storm would totally destroy that teacup. True, but that's not the point. What the phrase, a storm in a teacup, actually means is an argument about nothing. Hey, look outside, everybody. What do you see? It's raining heavily, sir. That's right! And another way of saying that would be, it's raining cats and dogs! Cats and dogs! It looks like cats and dogs attacked your skinny little legs. Mm -hmm. I've only seen legs like that on a daddy long leg spider. Well, it's true. I'm not as physically fit as I once was. Daddy long legs is actually not a spider. It's a harvestman. Harvest men only have two eyes. No venom, no silk, only one body. Are you body. some kind of fitness protection program? Hey, quit it. That's not nice. Goody Two-Shoes thinks she's the teacher now. What? No, I'm not. I mean, no, I don't. Best not to make waves. And the meanest girl in the class wonders why no one likes her. What? But I'm popular! <laughs> well, little Kiku, you done it again. I guess this is why you're walking home alone. Yep, you think you're being cool. But yo, you're just being cold. <laughs> You! Brainiac! You started all this! <laughs> oh no, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> How funny would it be if I sent you to the principal's office? <laughs> Humble, waddled, swaddled fowl, high above the beasts that growl, Turkey's air we did enjoin from Flint, Chicago, to Des Moines, to rise up and to proclaim our liberty and reclaim the mantle of the smartest birds and freedom from the connoisseurs of human dinners yearly made with beans and stuffing and beets pureed. Since lo, those many years ago, our four feathers flapped from high and low, from darkness of the pen and cage, our four feathers flapped with righteous rage. When at that fateful farm out west, no one knows the exact address, 
where evil Gordon would probe and study, his face all hairy, red and ruddy, his hat akimbo on his head, science experiments in Biomed. But our four feathers, astute, defiant, fought against the human giant with beak and claw and powerful brains. We waged a ruinous war campaign with turkey pinky pants at the fore. Hey, that's me. Farmer Gordon lost the war. His evil farm a smoking wreckage. I think that Gordon got the message. With beak and claw we foul of feather, braved the most inclement weather. Through hurricane and smog and blizzards, we nearly died and froze our gizzards to escape the greedy hand of man. To find our green and wooded land hidden from the hungry beasts, our numbers vastly have increased. Now Turkeyville is calm and tranquil. We recite these words to show we're thankful. Recruits, I am glad that y'all are dressed appropriately for today's training, for it would be discourteous to attempt this exercise without the appropriate attire. I have carefully chosen these here highfalutin regional garments to befuddle and bewitch our erstwhile bovine adversary. Oh, Do I'm completely lost. Is this going to be on the test? Ah, okay. Once again, today we are going to attack the bull by the horn, as the saying goes. But <laughs> today, the meaning is literal. <laughs> We will attempt this routine using the lasso technique. But first, I will demonstrate with a quick warm-up on how to use the lasso. Then, each one of you will try it yourselves. little help. <laughs> Silly me. I should have used my left hand. I think the lasso needs to go hmm, through the legs. Uh-oh. <gasps> I must feed it if I am to defeat it. Release the bull. But, are you sure you're warmed up enough? Release the bull!
How you tame a mad bull. Not fair. 